right, hey everyone, Justin again with JL Woodworks here in Dameron, Maryland. Um, so for the lumber that I'm using for this project, I've got some scrap oak that I had laying around. So I cut this to an inch and a quarter thick and then just simply edge grain glued, just like we would if we were going to make a cutting board um, or something like that. The benefit of this is, especially when staining oak, you lose that cathedral grain and you get a more consistent color on your project and I think you could see that in the beginning of the video. So placing some calls on the glue up just to try to keep it as flat as possible on the panel and then just making sure that I have good clamping pressure across the um, the whole blank. So I'll get into the toolpath creation now. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're going to jump into the start of this project. The first thing I wanted to talk about first is the v-carve toolpath in a previous video we talked about the molding toolpath we made some custom curved moldings so with this video i want to talk about the v-carve toolpath in the beginning so i think the first biggest question for new cnc owners is what bit do i use so i'm going to go through that and then the next thing that confuses a lot of people myself included is the v-carve toolpath because it's it's like the you know, it's got a mind of its own and technically it does. So the the software when we use the V the V carve toolpath Determines the depth based on the width of the vector So I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how that works So what I've done to to try to show this is I've got Spark three times. This is all the same font um, All the same height and width and everything then I have three P's down here at the bottom in the same um, font height and all that stuff so uh, the first part that I think is going to be easier to show this is with this straight away in the P from this point to this point we're at 0.27 inches and then on this P on the straight away we're at 0.47 inches so what I've done here at the top is I've just created this little vector here. This is 0.27. So if we can imagine this is our V-carve bit coming into the material on this first P, it's going to enter the material until it touches the vectors like this. And it's the same thing with the 60 degree and the 18. The only difference with the 60 degree and the 18 is that we're not going to be able to reach both sides of these vectors with one pass. So we're going to have to make two passes to get this done and then it's going to cut a little bit deeper. With the 18 degree, I can display this but I don't have the, the height of the cutter head right in here but we will be able to see once we run this toolpath. But you can see just from what I've shown here, just at the difference of the depths that each one of these bits are going to cut when they're trying to cut within that same vector. So to show this first, um, actually let me go back to the drawing because I want to measure this point here. So if this is the top of our material, this is our depth of cut, we'll say point thirty. 0.135 and we'll see just how close we are to that so we're gonna run this 90 degree first I've got my start depth at 0 so that means I've I'm gonna start on the top of the material surface no flat depth this is the bit that I'm using and we're just gonna calculate this so this is what our V bit with our 90 degree has done so on this P, if you look towards your lower right hand side and you hover your cursor over your cut, it'll show you the depths. So it looks to me that we're pretty close to um, you know, what we were able to see in the vector as far as how deep that the cut went. So in effort of time, I'm gonna just gonna preview all the other tool paths just so everyone can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So with the 90, we were able to reach both sides of these vectors in one pass. With the 60 degree V-bit, 
we had to make multiple passes. And if we look at the lower right hand side, we can see just how much deeper we cut in order to make that, in order to hit both sides of the vector. And then the 18 degree V bit, we can see that we cut all the way through there. Now the biggest difference I think you can see from this too is with the 18s on both sides of it. We didn't cut all the way through there and that's because these vectors are smaller. So hopefully that offers some type of explanation on how the V-Carve toolpath works. So if you want finer detail, I'm gonna go through that with the project that we're gonna do because even though you're using a V-Bit, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use the V-Carve toolpath. So we'll get into that next. And now we're gonna jump in the project itself. So we saw how I glued up the blank that I'm gonna use for this project. And what I have here is, the, this is the rough dimensions of my blank. So 19 and a half inches wide, 17 and an eighth inch tall. And what I'm gonna surface my blank with is a two and a half inch spoil board surfacing bit. So what I've done is created a vector that's five inches wider and taller than my project. Because remember, we're gonna run a pocket here so this bit is going to come here and down and we're going to miss some of the stuff in the corners and we want it to completely clear the material anyway so for the purposes of this when we set our x y coordinates we want our bit to be off to the side by roughly the, that amount or so um so i'm going to generate this toolpath to show what I'm talking about here. So when I placed my blank on the CNC, the first thing I did is I pre-drilled and the corners deep enough that I knew I wouldn't hit it when I started to surface it. Now my blank was was pretty flat to start with. So I started with a cut depth of just two hundredths just to see you know if that would get me where I needed to be and it did so I used a raster toolpath set at zero degrees I wanted my spoil board bit to cut with the grain in this direction instead of this direction here because I wanted to reduce as much tear out as I could but if your blank is set in the opposite direction of course you can do it that way too I don't need to worry about ramping plunge moves because the bit is going to be at its depth before it enters the material anyway. So we're going to calculate this toolpath and I'll select the vector that would help. All right, and we will um, preview this toolpath. So, and like I said, you can see there's a little bit of material left in the corners, but our blank is inset from this so we know we're good so once we flatten this one side we're gonna flip our work over and then flatten the other side um, I do have a planer that's large enough that I could run this blank through there but then the blank is coplanar to the cutter head of my planer and that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be coplanar with my spindle so flattening your work before, flattening your work on your CNC is going to ensure that your material surface is in plane with the cutter head of your CNC. And that's really, really important when we're looking at V carving, um, anything with a lot of detail, because it'll ensure that your depths are right. Um, if anyone's cut any plywood or anything like that, sometimes your lettering is off and that's why it's not completely in plane with your CNC. So now we're going to jump into the file itself. And the first thing that I want to do is I've marked some screw locations around the um, item that we're going to cut. And that's going to be the first tool path we're going to generate. And for this project, I'm using a three and a three eighths inch down cut bit and a 60 degree V bit. So you can certainly use a quarter inch end mill. That's perfectly fine. Half inch end mill 
whatever we need as far whatever you want to use as far as cutting these pockets so we're going to generate to start off with we're going to pocket this material and this material leaving this little bit and then we'll be leaving this little bit on the side too and then we're going to come back and v-carve the saying and then the nautical compass so the first thing is we're going to mark some screw locations if you don't have your project screwed down or whatever um, work holding you're using with clamps or or whatever and I'm just gonna run a simple pocketing bit or pocket tool path rather and I'm just gonna do a tenth of an inch I'm gonna label this screw location and I'm gonna preview that so we know that our screws are gonna be outside of our work and I just screw all of my work down to my, my spoil board unless I'm able to use the vacuum table but this is good to keep in mind for other projects and you can even do it after the fact to make sure after you run all of your tool paths and preview them that your screws aren't going to be in the path of your bit so the next thing we want to do I've grouped together the pockets that I want to make and I'm going to go to a pocketing tool path and I want our cut depth to be a quarter of an inch. My bit is correct. I do want to ramp my plunge moves. So I'm gonna ramp my plunge moves down and I'm gonna label this first pocket. I'm gonna preview that tool path. And so here's our first pocket we're a quarter of an inch below the surface of the material. So we need to keep that in mind now when we go to cut the V carve the words and then even with the nautical compass. And as you can see, I forgot to group these vectors together and that's not a big deal. What we're gonna do is just left click and highlight, hold shift and left click and now they're both highlighted. So now that we're in the V-carve tool path, we want a start depth of a quarter of an inch because that's how deep this pocket is. And we're gonna label this first, actually we can just label this V-carve. And we're gonna use a 60 degree bit. So we've got that labeled there. We're gonna calculate. And we're gonna preview that tool path. So as we can see, we have our saying now that's down in that pocket. And just so we can see this a little bit better, um, let me go ahead and set this tool path to a dark color. So here we are there. So the next thing we want to work on is this nautical compass here. So we could have used it with the same tool path that we had before, but we're gonna try another V-carve tool path here. And we can see it's not bad, but it is quite deep. We're cutting um, a half an inch deep. And so what I wanted to do is go in and paint all of this stuff and then clean it up. So we're gonna delete this tool path and we're going to try this. We're going to reset preview while we're at it. We're going to try this tool path with a profile tool path. And we're going to look at cutting this at around 0 0.08. We're going to do on the line with a 60 degree V bit. No separate last pass. And we're going to name this compass profile and see how this works out. We're going to preview all tool paths. Alright, so see that I made a mistake. I didn't remember that I needed to have this cut at a quarter of an inch with the depth of that pocket. Okay, and I, I like that a little bit better. Let's see if we reduce this just a little bit. 
and see what we're left with. Okay, so I like that. So we can see the difference between just using the vCarve toolpath and then a profile toolpath with um, a V bit. So we'll color this too, we can see it. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna highlight both of these since they're the same bit and I'm gonna merge these together and label these 60 degree V. Okay, so now just to recap, we have our screw locations done, our pockets are cut, and now we've gone through and done all of our lettering and carved our compass. So at this point, I would go in and paint all of this black with flat black paint is what I use, just out of a can, let it dry, and instead of trying to sand all of this, we're gonna do something different. We're going to go back to our pocketing toolpath and we're going to do a start depth of 0.25 and then we're going to do a depth of cut like 1 one hundredth and we're going to label this pocket cleanup and now we're going to preview all toolpaths so as we can see it didn't really do anything to what we have carved and if we've carved a little deep on this it didn't do anything more but make this a little bit sharper so for our final toolpath we're going to cut this out using a profile toolpath and my blank measured at 1.08 we're going to go back and select our 3 8 inch bit and since we had chosen on before when we cut this compass we want to make sure that we're going to cut on the outside right and the next thing I want to do I want to add an extra pass and I'm going to show you how we can have this outside cut just a little bit cleaner for us instead of the step down with grooves so we're going to add our ramps and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a lead so we're gonna add a lead where our bit is gonna come in at a 45 degree angle, ramp down as it does, and make the first cut, then exit the work at a 45 degree angle and overcut by two one hundredths. And before we do that, we're also gonna put some tabs in place that's gonna hold our work down. So we can see I've already got those generated. And we're going to call this our cutout. And we're going to preview all toolpaths. And this is what we're left with. And the reason that mine showed that it was cut all the way through is I had my material set up at 0 0.04 instead of the actual size of the blank. So what I want to show is just this final, this final cutout. So here we can see the bit entering in, overcutting at 45 degrees. And at this point too, it's ramping down. And then the final pass you'll see that it makes is the bit is going to raise up out of the material, move over that 0 0.02 and make a final pass all the way around that's going to clean up all those previous passes. And that's what we're left with.